Hello and welcome to this XRB podcast. My name is Kevin Simpkins and I'm the Chairman of the External Reporting Board, which we call the XRB for short. In June this year, the XRB, together with its sub-board, the New Zealand Accounting Standards Board, issued a package of exposure drafts for new standards for public sector public benefit entities. In this podcast, my colleague Michelle Embling and I will provide an overview of that package of EDs, which we are calling the Public Sector PBE Package. That package of EDs is available for free download from our website. The website address is www.xrb.govt.nz. You will also find a PowerPoint presentation about the Public Sector PBE package on the website, together with other resource material. Before we get into the detail of the Public Sector PBE package, I thought it would be helpful if I provided some context for the package. As you will know, in April this year, the XRB issued a new accounting standards framework. That framework was the result of two and a half years of consultation and deliberation by the Board. We are most grateful to our constituency for its engagement and contribution to that process. The new accounting standards framework consists of a two-sector, four-tier structure with different accounting standards applying to each tier. The easiest way to think about this is as a matrix with two columns and four rows. The two columns are the two broad sectors those being for-profit entities and public benefit entities. So the matrix has a for-profit entity column and a public benefit entity column. Whether an organisation is a for-profit or public benefit entity is determined by the definitions of each contained in the framework. Those definitions are the same as those in the existing accounting standards framework. Before you go scurrying off to look them up, let, re- let me remind you of what they are. A public benefit entity is a reporting entity whose primary objective is to provide goods or services for community or social benefit, and where any equity has been provided with a view to supporting that primary objective rather than for a financial return to equity holders. A for-profit entity is any reporting entity that is not a public benefit entity. So you are either one or the other. The key distinction is whether the entity exists for community or social benefit, or whether its primary objective is to make a profit. In broad terms, non-commercial public sector entities, plus private not-for-profit organisations, including charities, are public benefit entities, or PBEs for short. So that's the two columns of the matrix. The four rows are the tiers. We all know that preparing financial reports is an expensive business. Generally speaking, the smaller an organisation is, the proportionately more costly it is to prepare those reports. The new framework therefore uses tiers as a way of establishing a broad matching of the costs and benefits of reporting. This is not a completely new idea. New Zealand first introduced differential reporting into our accounting standards framework in the early 1990s, based on a benefit-cost criterion. This essentially created a second tier of reporting. In the case of the PBE sector, the new framework expands on this approach by establishing four tiers. Tier 1, which is the highest tier, will consist of PBEs that are publicly accountable. For the purposes of the accounting standards framework, public accountability has a particular defined meaning. That definition is based on whether the entity has securities that are traded in a public market or holds assets in a fiduciary capacity as part of its primary business. If a PBE meets these criteria, then it is deemed to be publicly accountable and is therefore in Tier 1. Large PBEs will also be in Tier 1. For this purpose, large is defined as expenses over $30 million. 
Under the new accounting standards framework, Tier 1 entities will be required to apply full PBE standards. Michelle will talk about that new suite of standards shortly. PBEs that do not meet the Tier 1 criteria will be able to elect to report in accordance with the lower tier. PBE Tier 2 will comprise entities that are not publicly accountable as defined and which have expenses less than or equal to $30 million. The accounting standards for this tier will be a reduced disclosure version of the PBE standards. PBE Tier 3 will comprise entities that are not publicly accountable as defined and which have expenses less than or equal to $2 million. PBE Tier 4 will comprise entities that are allowed by law to report using a non-generally accepted accounting practice or non-GAAP basis of accounting. The Government is proposing to allow for this in the legislative changes contained in the Financial Reporting Bill that was introduced to Parliament on 31 July 2012. That bill proposes, among other things, to allow PBEs with operating payments of $40,000 or less to report on a non-GAAP basis, and we expect that basis to be cash accounting. So that's a quick overview of the new accounting standards framework. The key thing about it for the purposes of this podcast is that there is a separate tier structure and related sets of accounting standards that will apply to PBEs. The new arrangements are specified in an exposure draft that revises standard XRBA1. That ED is part of the public sector PBE package. XRBA1 is the overarching standard that specifies exactly which standards different types of entities must apply. It was first issued by the XRB in July last year and replaced some of the old pronouncements such as the Inzika preface and the old ASRB releases. The current version of XRB A1 reflects the existing accounting standards framework. The ED issued as part of the public sector PBE package proposes an update to XRB A1 so that it reflects the new accounting standards framework as it applies to PBEs. The ED is actually the second proposed revision to XRB A1. In April, the XRB issued the first proposed revision, which was called XRB A1 bracket FP entities update close bracket. This current ED takes the FP revision and then adds in the new PBE requirements as they apply to public sector PBEs. Hence its title, XRB A1 brackets FP entities plus PS PBEs update bracket. A future revision will update XRB A1 for not for profit entities. The New Zealand Accounting Standards Board, which Michelle chairs and which is a sub board of the XRB, has the responsibility for developing all the accounting standards necessary to give effect to the new accounting standards framework. In the case of the PBE part of the framework, that involves developing four different sets of standards. These are the PBE standards that must be applied by Tier 1 entities, the PBE standards with reduced disclosure requirements that may be applied by entities that are eligible for and elect to be in Tier 2, the simple format reporting standards based on accrual accounting that may be applied by entities that are eligible for and elect to be in Tier 3, and the simple format reporting standards expected to be based on cash accounting that may be applied by entities that are eligible for and elect to be in Tier 4. All four of these sets of standards must be appropriate and applicable to both public sector and private not-for-profit PBEs. The public sector PBE package contains exposure drafts for the standards that will form the initial suite of PBE standards that will apply to Tier 1 and Tier 2 public sector PBEs. Future packages will contain EDs for PBE standards as they apply to not-for-profit PBEs 
and EDs for simple format reporting standards for Tier 3 and Tier 4 for both public sector and not-for-profit entities. So this public sector PBE package is the first of four packages of EDs that will be released over the next year or so, containing proposed standards for PBEs. It is, however, a very significant package from a public sector perspective because it contains EDs for the standards that the vast majority of public sector PBEs will be required to follow in the future, probably from the 2014-15 financial year. I will now hand over to Michelle, who will outline the content of the PBE standards as they apply to public sector PBEs.